You are tuned into the leading internet radio station in the mother city. Radio Estrava. Radio Estrava. Radio Estrava. Radio Estrava. Serving him's been such a thrill I have never seen the gates to that city Oh, but one day, one day I will One day I'm gonna walk on streets of pure gold And they tell me the hat has never yet been told I'll be united with loved ones on Zion's holy hill Yes, one day one day I will From the time I first met him He's been all to me And my life with his joy he has faith And I'm longing for the day When my eyes shall behold him Thank God one day One day I will One day I'm gonna walk On streets of you are listening and to Radio Estrema. The hand has never yet been told. I'll be united with loved ones on Zion's holy hill. Oh, one day, one day I will. One day I'm gonna walk on streets of pure gold, and they tell me the hand has never yet been told. I'll be united with loved ones on Zion's holy God bless you and welcome to this morning's broadcast of the message of the hour. This is Brother Elmar addressing you from the studios of Radio Yesterday in Cape Town, South Africa. May the Lord bless you and may He be with you. For those of you that have tuned in this morning, I would like to just give you a warm welcome and greet you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And thank you once again for tuning in and for your continued support. Please continue to spread the word out there about the local radio station. Tell all your friends, your neighbors, your loved ones that they can follow us on Facebook, on YouTube and other social media platforms. They can also download the Radio Easter River app on the Play Store. And may the Lord just bless you in doing that. Just spread the word out there. Yes, a wonderful song we just listened to by Walt Mills back from the 1970s speaking about one day. And this is the hope of the Christian of things that are to be things that are yet to come. 
Yes, God promised us many things, yes. And we see a lot of these promises in the book of Revelation, where God promises that he will wipe away all the tears from our eyes, where God speaks of about a city that's built four square, of which the streets are made of pure gold, of which the walls are made of jasper, and of which the gates are pearls, hallelujah, and in which God himself shall be. God shall dwell in that city and his people, he shall see him, hallelujah. So we are looking forward to that day, hallelujah, when our eyes shall behold him. Yes, we've never seen our Savior, and Peter writes about this in First Peter, and he says that we have not seen Jesus Christ, but yet we believe in him, and yet we love him. And Jesus made the declaration in John chapter 20, that blessed are those who have not seen, and yet they have believed. And that is what faith is all about. We walk by faith and not by sight. We rely upon the word of God and we look through the eyes of faith and we see the promises of God. So may the Lord just bless you. And I trust that song was a great blessing to you. And now there's no greater blessing than the word of God. We can have all the singing. We can have all the gifts of the spirit operating. We can have all the wonderful things of the material world. But nothing is higher or greater than the word of God and that is what I want to switch your attention to this morning is to the word of God so if you have your Bibles ready you can turn with me please to the book of Numbers Numbers chapter 19 and we shall read from verse 1 the Bible says and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron saying this is the ordinance of the law which the Lord have commanded, saying speak unto the children of Israel that they bring thee a red heifer without spot wherein is no blemish and upon which never came yoke and you shall give her unto Eleazar the priest that he may bring her forth without the camp and one shall slay her before his face and Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times and one shall burn the heifer in his sight, a skin and a flesh in a blood, with a dung shall he burn, and the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. Then the priest shall wash his clothes and he shall bathe his flesh in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp, and the priest shall be unclean until the even. And he that burneth her shall wash his clothes in water, and bathe his flesh in water, and shall be unclean until the even. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer, and lay them up without the camp in a clean place. And it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel, for a water of separation. It is a purification for sin." And he that gathereth the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and shall be clean until the even. And it shall be unto the children of Israel and unto the stranger that sojourneth among them for a statute forever. He that toucheth the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. He shall purify himself with it on the third day. And on the seventh day he shall be clean. But if he purity not himself... Purify not himself the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. Whosoever toucheth the body of a dead man, any man that is dead, and purify not himself, defileth the tabernacle of the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from Israel, because of the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him, and he shall be unclean. His uncleanness is yet upon him. Him. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Now we want to speak this morning about the red heifer. Hallelujah. This red heifer, to bring it down in simple terms today, it was a red cow. Hallelujah. It was red in color. And God spoke certain things to be done concerning the red heifer. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now what we must take note of is, in verse 1 it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron. God first needs to speak. Whatever we do, we must let God speak first and then we do what God says. God does the speaking and we have the part of obeying. Hallelujah. So this is instruction coming from God. And God gave instru instruction <coughs> concerning the red heifer. 
in the Red River was used as a sacrifice for the purification of the sins of the people. And it had to be specifically a red heifer. And the Bible says that they've never been used before upon which never any yoke came, in which there is no blemish without spot. So it had to be a pure animal, hallelujah. That is what is an acceptable offering unto God. Something that is undefiled, something that is pure, hallelujah. Such a thing can be used in the service of God. Even us, when we want to be used of God, we first need to be become pure, hallelujah. We need to become cleansed and then God can use us in his service now god gave certain instructions hallelujah and it had to be the priest eliezer that had to slaughter hallelujah and had to take the blood of this red heifer and sprinkle it seven times now this red heifer was a shadow and a type hallelujah a shadow and a type of jesus christ which was to come as the perfect sacrifice hallelujah we know that all things that happen under the law if you read hebrews 10 verse 1 the bible says the law having a shadow of things to come hallelujah the law having a shadow of things that were to come not the very things itself but a shadow hallelujah so what transpired in the old testament pointed to the new testament whether it be prophecy whether it be psalms whether it be sacrifices whether it be festivals it all pointed to the perfect one which was to come which is jesus christ now the blood of these animals under the old covenant could not take anyone's sins away now it was used for purification for atonement and so forth but we see that it could not take the people's sins away. And then we go over to Hebrews chapter 10, where the Bible says that God no longer wanted these sacrifices, but he prepared a body for himself. Hallelujah. And that body is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ, we read about him in the epistle of Peter, that he was without spot, without blemish, as a lamb. Hallelujah. We read about Jesus Christ that in his mouth there was found no guile he was pure hallelujah he was clean he did not commit any sins he is the only one that has never sinned everyone born from adam up till now has sinned the bible says in Romans chapter 3 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of god hallelujah but we will be justified by his grace through faith in Jesus Christ. There's only one that is sinless. There's only one that is spotless. There's only one that is pure. There's only one that is clean. And that is Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. And this heifer was a shadow and a type of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That was to come as the sacrifice. The Bible calls him in John chapter 1 verse 29. Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Yes. So this all pointed to the perfect sacrifice that was to come. Now we see that this heifer had to be slaughtered right in the presence of the priest, of the high priest. And so we see that Jesus Christ was also slaughtered, hallelujah, in the presence of the priest, of the high priest. It was the religious people that crucified Jesus back then. It is them that people thought they ought to be right. It is them that denied him and crucified him. Yes. And it was them that delivered Jesus over to Pontius Pilate for questioning and for crucifixion. Yes. And so we see the picture unfolding. Hallelujah. Just as it happened under the old covenant law that the sacrifice had to be made in the presence of the high priest of the priest hallelujah so we see also that jesus christ was crucified in the presence of those so-called priests and high priests the religious clergy hallelujah the pharisees the sadducees the scribes hallelujah he was crucified he was slaughtered in their presence hallelujah and now the bible says that eliezer had to take the blood of the heifer and Eliezer had to sprinkle it seven times before the congregation. Hallelujah. And we see that after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, and after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he appeared unto the apostle John on the Isle of Patmos in Revelation chapter 1. And we see him giving instructions to the apostle John, the seer John, hallelujah, as he is known as John the Revelator. And he spoke to John, to, to write up the things that he sees 
and to send it to the seven churches that are in Asia Minor. Hallelujah. Seven times the blood had to be sprinkled of the heifer and the blood of Jesus Christ in the New Testament applies also to the seven churches. Hallelujah. To the seven dispensations. Hallelujah. To the seven eras. Hallelujah. Now we see that from the time that Jesus ascended into heaven up till now, 2,000 years have lapsed. 2,000 years have come and gone. Hallelujah. And these 2,000 years have been divided into seven epochs, which run parallel to the seven churches of Revelation. Hallelujah. Now we see that in Revelation, they are listed as the church of Ephesus, the church of Smyrna, the church of Pergamum, the church of Thyatira, the church of Sardis, the church of Philadelphia, and the church of Laodicea. Hallelujah. So these were seven literal churches located in several, seven literal geographical locations, but they also reflected the condition of the church over, over seven epochs, over seven eras, hallelujah, and we are living in the seven, hallelujah, we are living right at the door before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and just as the blood of the heifer was sprinkled seven times before the congregation, hallelujah, so also the blood of Jesus Christ is applicable to to everyone living during the seven epochs, hallelujah. For the past 2,000 years, it is only through the blood, hallelujah. It is only the blood that can offer forgiveness of sins. It is only the blood that can set you free, hallelujah. It is only the blood that has power, hallelujah. It is only through the blood that we have the forgiveness of sins. It is only through the blood that we have sanctification, hallelujah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13, in verse 12, that Jesus, to sanctify the people, he had to suffer without the gate, hallelujah. What is To sanctify the people with his own blood, he had to suffer without the gate, outside the gate, hallelujah, outside the city, outside Jerusalem. And outside Jerusalem, there was a hill called Golgotha, hallelujah, the place of the skull, also translated as Calvary, hallelujah. And it is through his blood, his blood that shed outside the gate, his blood that shed outside the city. It is through his blood, hallelujah, that you can be sanctified. There is no other way but through the blood of Jesus. You can only get access to heaven through the blood of Jesus, hallelujah. Now many people throughout the ages have shed their blood, hallelujah. We see people being murdered for political reasons. We see people being murdered for personal reasons. We see people being murdered for religious reasons. But all those people's blood could not take the sins of the world away. Hallelujah. We see even the apostles of Jesus had to shed their blood. Paul shed his blood. John shed his blood. Peter shed his blood. Stephen shed his blood. John the Baptist shed his blood. But their blood could not take the sins of the world away. But it took the one, hallelujah, that was without spot, the one that was without blemish, the one that was without sin, the one that was pure, hallelujah, the one that was untouched and undefiled, Jesus Christ. And he took him to sacrifice his life and shed his blood so that the sins of the world could be atoned for, hallelujah. Now we see when the, the high priest Eliezer, hallelujah, there was a specific ritual that he had to perform. And the Bible says, <coughs> And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. Hallelujah. So we see that while the heifer, this animal was being burned, the priest had to take these three substances and he had to throw it into the fire while this animal was burning. And even these three substances, they speak of the work of God, hallelujah, work of grace, hallelujah. There are things that we can do for God, but then there's things that only God can do for us, hallelujah. And we see that the cedar hood, hallelujah, it is a type, it is a reflection, it is a shadow pointing to the wood of Calvary, hallelujah. Jesus was crucified on a wood, hallelujah, on a tree, hallelujah. The cross was made of wood and that wood came from a tree, hallelujah. So the cedar wood, it points to the crucifixion, hallelujah. And if you believe in the crucifixion and in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you can be justified of your sin. 
The Bible says in Romans 5 verse 1, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you believe in what happened on the cross of Calvary, you can be justified of your sins. If you believe that Christ died for you, hallelujah, and he was buried and rose again, if you believe in what he did on that wood, on that tree, hallelujah, you can be justified. Yes, then the Bible says the priest also had to cast in hyssop. Now hyssop we see was also, it was a certain type of plant, a certain type of herb, hallelujah, that was used. Yes, we see in the Old Testament times that it was used before the children of Israel left Egypt. They had to take the hyssop and they had to apply the blood to the doorposts, hallelujah. We see the, uh, the psalmist David, the King David, he wrote in Psalm 51 that God should purge him with hyssop, hallelujah. So it was this herb that was used to apply the blood, hallelujah. And hyssop is a shadow, is a type, is a reflection of sanctification, hallelujah. So the hyssop was used to apply the blood and you get sanctified through the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is only the blood that can make you holy, that can make you pure, that can make you clean. And then we see the other substance that the priest had to cast into the fire was scarlet. Hallelujah. Yes, scarlet. And scarlet speaks of redemption. Hallelujah. And when God gives you the Holy Ghost, when he gives you the Holy Ghost baptism, hallelujah, he seals you unto the day of your redemption, hallelujah. The Bible says in Ephesians 4 verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God by whom you have been sealed until the day of your redemption, hallelujah. So the scarlet speaks of redemption, hallelujah. It speaks about the baptism of the Holy Ghost by which we are sealed unto the day of our redemption. Not from the next service to the other, from one revival to the other, from one place to the other, but God seals you until the day of your redemption. Hallelujah. And scarlet in the Bible has always spoken of redemption. Hallelujah. In the book of Joshua chapter 2, we see a harlot by the name of uh, Rahab. Hallelujah. And we see how that she rescued the slaves. Hallelujah. Not the slaves, the spies. The spies that came in. And to explore the, the land. And she was letting down a scarlet thread through a window so that the, the spies could escape. Hallelujah. So the scarlet thread, the red thread, it speaks about redemption, about saving, about salvation. Hallelujah. Even the red heifer itself, it had to be red in color because red speaks of redemption. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. It speaks of redemption. And that is what it's all about. Jesus Christ coming down to redeem us, to give us our redemption. And that is what the red heifer typified or signified or symbolized. It spoke of redemption, the redemption that had to be done through Jesus Christ, who was without spot, without wrinkle, hallelujah, without blemish, without sin, without guilt. He became sin so that we can become the righteousness of God. Now, beloved, we're going to take a break quickly. We're going to listen to that song by Walt Mills again one day. After that, we return to the broadcast of the message of the hour. God bless you. Radio Yisrava. Radio Yisrava. Radio Yisrava. Radio Yisrava. seen the face of my Savior, but serving Him's been such a thrill. I have never seen the gates to that city, oh, but one day one day I will One day I'm gonna walk On streets of pure gold And they tell me the hat Has never yet been told I'll be united with love 
on Zion's holy hill. Yes, one day, one day I will. From the time I first met him. He's been all to me And my life with his joy He has filled And I'm longing for the day When my eyes shall behold him Thank God one day One day I streets of pure gold and they tell me the hand has never yet been told I'll be united with loved ones on Zion's holy hill oh one day one day streets of pure gold and they tell me the hand has never yet been told how do you not with loved ones on Zion's holy hill yes one day one day I will Radio Yisrova, Radio Yisrova, Radio Yisrova. I have never seen the face of my Savior. But serving him's been yes, such a thrill. I have never seen the gates to that city. Oh, but one day, one day I will. One day. streets of pure gold and they tell me the hand has never yet been told I'll be united with loved ones on Zion's holy hill yes one day one day time I first met him he's been all to me and my life with his joy he has filled and I'm longing for the day when my eyes you are listening to Radio Yesterova God bless you and welcome back to this morning's broadcast of the message of the hour. Yes.
is it to be used as a uh, water of separation and it was this water of separation that purified the children of Israel from their sin hallelujah and it is through Jesus Christ that we can experience the water of separation hallelujah where he separates you from the world where he separates you from sin where he separates you from the things of the world hallelujah it is through him and him alone that you can be separated that you can be set aside hallelujah that you can be made different than all the others because it is him alone that has the power to do so and the bible speaks about the washing of the waters through the word hallelujah and it is the word of god that purifies you that sanctifies you just as the ashes of the heifer purified the people hallelujah the bible says it is a purification of sin yes this ashes of the heifer if you read verse 9 the bible says and a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and lay them up without the camp in a clean place and it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of israel for a water of separation it is a purification for sin hallelujah and so it is also with the word of god hallelujah it is the water of separation it is what separates you from the world and the things of the world and from sin and from darkness right in the very beginning we see that the word of god brings about a separation hallelujah we see that god said and let there be light and there was light and we see that the darkness was divided hallelujah light divided the darkness hallelujah so right in the very beginning it was the word of god that divided light from darkness and throughout the bible we see god uh, separating his people hallelujah separating them from filth and iniquity separating them from evil hallelujah we see in genesis chapter 12 a man by the name of abram god appeared unto him or spoke to him and god said that he should uh, leave his father's house and his uh, country and his family hallelujah and he must go to a land that god would show him and so it was with abraham that he had to separate himself hallelujah the word of god separated him hallelujah separated him from his origins his background his family god took him away from what he was and where he came from and then god took him to where god wanted him to be god separated abraham through his word and we see that abraham obeyed god and he moved away hallelujah he moved and he went to where god showed him the bible says in the book of hebrews chapter 11 that abram didn't even know where he was going but he followed obediently hallelujah he followed god and he went to where god pointed out the place the location that he should settle and so throughout the bible we see god separating <coughs> the children of israel from the egyptians we see god leading them out with the mighty hand through the exodus god taking them out yes taking them out from egypt and that is a type a symbol hallelujah a shadow of god taking the believer out of the world and out of the presence of the people of the world hallelujah now for those that are believers and followers of jesus christ they are in this world but they are not of this world because if you are born again you've been born from above hallelujah so you are not from this world but you are from the world above hallelujah we see that jesus even spoke to pontius pilate in john chapter 18 and he said that his kingdom is not of this world if his kingdom was of this world then his subjects would have fought from him hallelujah so just as jesus is not from this world so also the followers of jesus that are born again are not from this world they are born of above hallelujah praise the name of the lord they are born from above so they are separated from the world they talk different than the world they act different than the world they dress different than the world they are different from the world because the word of god separates them hallelujah and that is what the waters of separation is about it's about the word of god separating you and purifying you from sin yes that is what it's all about now the word of god has purifying power jesus says in john chapter 15 now are you clean through the word which i have spoken unto you hallelujah so the word of god purifies the word of god cleans hallelujah if you will open the chambers of your heart and just allow the word of god to penetrate hallelujah the word of god will separate and clean you up hallelujah from all things that are not uh, right in the sight of the lord yes hallelujah and we see in john chapter 17 verse 17 
Jesus praying and saying, sanctify them in thy truth. Thy word is the truth. It is the word of God that sanctifies you, hallelujah, that purifies you, that makes you clean. When the word of God is being broadcast, when the word of God is being spoken, and people hearken unto the word of God, hallelujah, the word of God has the power to purify, it has the power to cleanse. The word of God has healing power in it. If you read Psalm 107 verse 20, and the Bible says he sent his word and healed them. Hallelujah. The word of God is healing power. Now the Bible instructs us to lay our hands on the sick and they shall recover. The Bible instructs us to pray for the sick. But even the preaching of the gospel, hallelujah, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, just the preaching of the word alone can also heal, hallelujah. Because the Bible says in Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent his word and it healed them. And we see Jesus sometimes healed people by just speaking a word, hallelujah. The word of God can even cast out devils, hallelujah. We see Jesus just spoke a word and the devils fled, hallelujah. And that is how powerful the word of God is. It has purifying power, hallelujah. It, is, it has the power to separate, hallelujah, to cleanse and to make clean. And we need to come to the waters of separation, hallelujah. If we don't come to the waters of separation, hallelujah, we cannot be purified from our sins. If we do not come to the word of God and allow it to clean us out, then we cannot be clean, hallelujah. And we cannot step into the presence of God. But it is the word of God that cleanses us, that purifies us, that makes us clean, hallelujah. And that allows us access into the presence of God, hallelujah. It is the water of separation. Hallelujah. We need to come through the washing of the waters through the word. Hallelujah. The word of God has that power to purify you, to sanctify you. Hallelujah. The word of God is the most powerful force there is in the entire universe. Because God spoke the world into existence through his word. Hallelujah. God spoke it and it came to pass. And that is what we also need to do. Hallelujah. We need to believe we need to believe the word of God. Hallelujah. If we don't believe, it is null and void to us. <coughs> but it, if we do.
sleeping on the promise hallelujah and all you need to do is to sleep on the promise sleep on the word of god just become calm hallelujah and relaxed and just rest rest upon what god said hallelujah when we sleep we are relaxing hallelujah we are resting and that is what it's about when you trust god you are relaxing hallelujah you are confident there's no worry there's no stress because you know god said it and you believe it and that settles it hallelujah whatever god says we know that god keeps his promises god keeps his word and his word is forever valid his word is forever true and if you've not yet come to the waters of separation i would like to invite you this morning if there are those that have not yet accepted jesus christ as their own personal savior now is the day of salvation now is the acceptable time many people have grown up with religion all their life but yet they do not understand they worship but they don't know what they're worshiping and that is what jesus was saying in john chapter 4 you worship what you do not know we worship what we know hallelujah and many times people walk blindly and just believe whatever is being told to them without examining whether it is so but the bible says in the book of acts chapter 17 it speaks about the believers yes those believers in berea that were more noble than those in thessalonica that received the word with gladness and search the scriptures daily whether these things are so people we cannot be led blind by just accepting what somebody else said we need to check the bible ourselves we need to examine the scriptures ourselves we need to see whether these things are so or not hallelujah and we need to have our own personal encounter with the lord jesus christ yes now in god's kingdom there's only children not grandchildren god only has sons and daughters god only has children hallelujah and for you to become a child of god you become a child by birth hallelujah the bible says except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god except a man be born of water born of water and spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god so that is how it is people that is how it works you become a child of god by the new birth just as you become a child of your parents by the natural birth so you become a child of god by the spiritual birth so the birth in the natural in itself it is an experience any woman that is given birth can relay the story and tell you what an experience it was yes and so it is also that when we become christians when we become sons and daughters of god when we become believers it is an experience hallelujah where you experience the lord jesus christ and you bow your knees hallelujah you close your eyes you open your mouth and you repent of your sins hallelujah and it is very important that people must repent and they must accept jesus christ as their own personal savior there's no way to get to heaven without accepting jesus christ as your own personal savior hallelujah that is how it works that is the scripture that is the bible jesus says i am the way the truth and the life no man comes to me no man comes to the father except through me hallelujah you need to accept jesus christ as your own personal savior you need to believe in him hallelujah and what he did for you on the cross of calvary 2000 years ago and you need to repent of your sins the bible says in acts chapter 2 verse 38 repent and be baptized in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the holy spirit hallelujah you need to believe you need to believe in jesus christ you need to repent you need to be baptized in his name the bible says in in mark chapter 16 verse 16 the bible says he that believes and is baptized shall be saved but he that does not believe shall be condemned hallelujah that is god's word god's word is final hallelujah god's word is authoritative we can trust and believe what god has said because god doesn't change his mind like we do we say one thing now then we change our minds and then we say something again tomorrow but god sticks to his word hallelujah and god promises eternal life for those that believe in jesus christ john chapter 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life hallelujah have everlasting life that is god's promise that is god's guarantee and god cannot lie hallelujah god keeps his promises god keeps his word and people there's an opportunity now this morning maybe you've been a, a church member all your life 
but you've never really had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now is your opportunity. Now is the time for you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior. If there's anyone out there in the radio land, somewhere out there tuning in from some platform, you can close your eyes and bow your head right there, right now where you are, and you can just pray the simple prayer. Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I acknowledge and I admit that I'm a sinner and that I'm lost, that I'm hell-bound. But I realized this morning that you did a great sacrifice for me on the cross of Calvary. And thank you for your precious word that has gone forth this morning. I repent of my sins and I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. I pray that you will now come into my heart and fill me with your spirit and teach me your ways that I might serve and follow you all the days of my life. I ask this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if you've prayed that simple prayer from the bottom of your heart, I believe that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior. And if you would like to learn more about the Word of God and interested in starting a relationship with God from this day forward, you can contact me on 83 670 if there's any preachers and pastors that would like to invite me over to their churches to come and share the gospel of Jesus Christ with your congregations, you're also more than welcome to contact me. May the Lord bless you and may he be with you until the next time. And as I go off the air, we're going to listen to that beautiful song again by Walt Mills. It speaks about one day. So you keep in your prayers as I keep you in my prayers. And God bless you and be with you until the next time. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Ready is rubber. Ready is rubber. Ready is rubber. Ready is rubber. I have never seen the face. Of my Savior, but serving Him's been such a thrill. I have never seen the gates to that city. Oh, but one day, one day I will. One day I'm gonna walk on streets of pure gold And they tell me the hat has never yet been told I'll be united with loved ones on Zion's holy hill Yes, one day one day I will From the time I first met him He's been all to me And my life with his joy he has faith, and I'm longing for the day when my eyes shall behold him. Yes, Thank God, one day, one day I will. One day I'm gonna walk on streets of your gold and they tell me the hand has 